In 2024, South Korea's Aerospace Research Institute, called CASA, is planning to send its astronauts to the moon for research purposes and to make their name on the list of countries that have successfully landed on the moon. The launch of the spacecraft begins. The spacecraft easily crosses the Earth's surface, but when it tries to land, due to a technical fault, it explodes, leading to all the astronauts dying. The tragic incident leaves everyone in South Korea shocked and disappointed. A whole five-year span passes, and in 2029, South Korea Korea's space agency is again attempting to send their three new astronauts to the moon to regain the reputation they lost five years ago. These three astronauts are Commander Lee, Cho, and Huang. These astronauts begin their intense training for the launch, hoping it won't end like last time. Before the launch, all three of these astronauts give their message to the general public of Korea. Lee reveals that his wife is pregnant and the delivery is expected when he is on the moon, so he plans to name his newborn while watching the Earth from the moon. Cho says he's going to the moon to make his family proud, while Huang reveals that he is the son of one of the astronauts from the previous mission who died five years ago, and he's going to fulfill his late father's dream by landing on the moon. The day of the launch comes, and all three of them get themselves boarded on the ship. The ship launches successfully and leaves Earth's orbit. All is going well, but as soon as they get closer to the moon, they are hit by several solar flares that cause major damage to the spacecraft. Their electronics control system and navigation system break down, resulting in the astronauts astronauts losing their contact with the control room on Earth. Once again, the public of Korea loses hope and they become worried that this mission will also end in chaos like the last time. To calm the general public down, the Minister of Science and Technology appears on national television and tries to control the situation, but the media keeps pressing the matter more and more. Meanwhile, in space, Lee and Cho get out of the spacecraft to check the outer parts in hopes that they can repair the damaged parts affected by the solar flares. Huang, being paranoid, is still in side guiding both of them as he doesn't have a lot of knowledge about this technology. Lee and Cho notice that the solar flares have damaged the fuel tank, and the fuel is now leaking. As they try to process the situation by themselves, a huge explosion happens, due to which Cho loses his life and is blown away. While Lee gets a massive impact on his body and is heavily injured, he does not get blown away as he is connected to the spacecraft by a safety wire. The home base research center receives some signals from the spacecraft for a short period when they see a faint Lee hanging outside the spacecraft, and they become aware from the vitals that Cho is now dead. Huang rushes towards the hatchet and tries to get out to save Lee, but Lee stops him and reveals that opening the hatchet will only kill him. Lee realizes that he won't be able to survive as he has received many injuries and, in his final moments, he asks Huang to reboot the entire system power so that communication can be restored. He also asks Huang to promise that he'll return safely back to Earth. Huang tries to stop him, but Lee is persistent on Huang's safety, so he removes the safety wire. Huang screams as he witnesses Commander Lee disappearing into the infinite void of space. Moments later, communication is restored, and a devastated Huang appears on the screen to deliver the tragic news. The CASA director instructs him to wait while they search for a solution, while the minister panics, fearing another mission loss. The scientists discuss their options and reluctantly agree that they have no choice but to retrieve the director of the previous mission, as he designed most of their equipment and protocols. The previous director, Kim, is currently on a mountain with Han Byul, engaged in hunting activities. Kim has been avoiding CASA since the failure of the last mission, now working for an observatory. However, their hunting activity is interrupted when a CASA helicopter unexpectedly appears above them, and all the animals run away. At the observatory, they try to have a conversation with Kim to convince him. Initially, Kim immediately refuses to return to CASA, but his mind changes upon learning that Huang is the son of one of the astronauts from the previous mission which he handled, and he agrees to join them. In the control room, scientists are concerned as they observe the ship's temperature dropping dangerously low, causing the minister to panic once more. Just as the commotion is about to begin, Kim arrives and guides Huang on how to activate a single thruster and operate it to move the ship into lunar orbit. Everything goes by Kim's plan and the temperature of the spacecraft starts to rise, and it also begins to spin in orbit which is much safer. Kim instructs Huang to rest while they search for a solution to bring him back. Confused, Huang questions the name of the person who he 
is addressing with. When he hears Kim's name, memories of his father's funeral flashback in Huang's mind. Kim was also there at the funeral. This prompts Huang to have a look at the family photos of the other astronauts who have just died on this mission, understanding the sadness of their families that they may be experiencing right now. Meanwhile, Kim reaches out to his ex-wife on the phone, Moon Young, now employed at NASA, seeking help from NASA. However, Moon Young informs him that NASA refuses to intervene because the situation is hopeless and a lost cause. After Kim finishes the call, Han approaches him and shares news about the increasing panic because of Huang's decision to separate the lander without authorization. Kim hurries to confront Huang, warning him about the dangers of his actions as it is a bad idea. However, Huang stays determined, refusing to trust Kim because he failed to save his father. Huang insists on landing on the moon, driven by the memory of fallen astronauts, especially his father, and a deep sense of pride for South Korea. As the citizens of South Korea and the press react strongly to the news, Han informs Kim about the possibility of a meteor shower. Kim asks her to keep watch while he focuses on devising a plan for repairs. Meanwhile, scientists work hard to guide Huang, who is relying on autopilot for the mission. Kim can't shake off memories of his past work and his first encounter with a much younger Huang, fearing a repeat of the previous mission's failure. Tension rises as the lander starts gaining speed, but fortunately, it lands successfully. South Korea's public begins to celebrate when Huang finally steps onto the moon's surface, honoring his fellow astronauts by placing their uniforms and a crew picture there. He proudly sets up the South Korean flag before setting up and driving on the rover to collect samples for the completion of the mission, while a drone monitors the surroundings. Kim discusses repair options with the scientists as the South Korean president appears to deliver a speech, urgently appealing to NASA for help in bringing Huang back. Moon Young tries to convince NASA NASA higher-ups, but they decline due to concerns about the potential meteor shower. They dismiss Moon Young's plea, suggesting her judgment is completely based on her feelings for her ex-husband. Suddenly Han receives some alarming readings on her tablet, and she rushes to inform Kim about it, which predicts that NASA is correct in determining that there is a meteor shower coming too close to the moon. Returning to Huang, he proudly reports that he has successfully collected all the samples, including those from beneath the moon's surface which includes the ice. He assumes that there is not going to be a meteor shower soon as there is no activity on the radar, suspecting a mistake in the readings of NASA. However, his surroundings suddenly begin to shake and meteors start raining down around him, causing him to fall off by the impact. Following the scientist's orders, Huang attempts to retreat into the lander quickly. He tries to escape towards the lander using the rover, but a large meteor crashes down causing an explosion that traps the vehicle inside a crater. Kim rushes and instructs the scientists to reset the spacecraft's module system with a new code he has designed, effectively repairing the module and restoring power to the ship. Meanwhile, Huang calls for his drone, which he uses to lift himself out of the crater. Racing through the falling meteors by using the support of the drone, he manages to reach the lander and get inside just in time. The lander successfully takes off, with the next objective being to connect it to the command module. Once again relying on autopilot for docking, but thankfully they managed to complete the task successfully. Just as Huang is about to transfer to the main ship, a meteor strikes the spacecraft, causing severe damage and sending it flying away. Kim urgently instructs Huang to switch to manual mode, but the violent shaking prevents him from reaching the controls. Suddenly, Huang accidentally inhales ammonia, feeling dizzy as he reaches for his helmet. Unfortunately, it's too late. Huang loses consciousness, and the lander crashes, cutting off all communication with the control room. Despite hours of unsuccessful attempts to reconnect, the control room can't detect Huang's vitals. After four agonizing hours, Huang is officially declared dead, while news outlets report yet another mission failure. Frustrated, Kim returns home, overwhelmed by the weight of another loss. He tries to kill himself, but Han intervenes just in time and stops him. In a surprising turn of events, Kim receives a message from Moon Young, revealing that Huang is still alive. Moon Young explains that NASA intercepted radio messages from Huang, attempting to communicate with his own space station, Moon. Moon Young provides Kim with the code to access the frequency. With Han's help, Kim rushes to the observatory to retrieve some old equipment. They manage to intercept Huang's SOS message, 
which Han quickly records. Kim communicates with Huang, learning about his low power and oxygen supply and the ongoing meteor shower. Kim advises Huang to remain in the lander while he seeks a solution. Suddenly, a helicopter appears. Han had called an emergency service, falsely claiming that Kim was having a heart attack to ensure a swift rescue. The helicopter gets used as a transport service for Kim to get back to CASA headquarters, while Han uploads Huang's SOS message to YouTube, which quickly gains widespread attention. While Huang does his best to tend to his wounds with whatever supplies he has, Han keeps him company through the comms. However, her attempts to engage him in conversation only serve to annoy him, especially when she presumes to know him based on a few online articles she read about him. Thanks to the viral audio, people worldwide gather up in support of Huang, asking for support from NASA to send assistance. The higher-ups at NASA grow suspicious of Moon Young as they investigate the leak of information. Before they can inspect her phone, they receive a call from the White House. After extensive efforts from CASA, communication is restored with the lander. However, the minister expresses dissatisfaction, questioning the point of reviving Huang in the public eye if they can't ensure his safety afterward. As the meteor shower increases, Kim tries to find a safer location for Huang but struggles to decide where. At that moment, news arrives from the USA. The White House has ordered NASA to assist Huang. A news quickly spreads throughout the world. The American Lunar Station and Moon Young collaborated with CASA to plan the rescue mission. However, at the NASA office, Moon Young faces dismissal and is submitted to the disciplinary committee. She's permitted to stay for this mission only as NASA doesn't want to get a bad reputation in front of the White House. Moon Young warns that they only have one chance at success. The American station begins its journey to dock with the South Korean ship. Despite Huang's efforts to relaunch the lander, it fails due to lack of space and misalignment with the surface. Kim tries to advise Huang to abort, but it's too late. The lander crashes and rolls on the surface multiple times before falling into a crater again, destroying the docking port completely. The American station announces it can no longer maintain the velocity and wait for Huang, forcing Moon Young to cancel the rescue mission. In a last effort, Kim offers Huang ideas to get the lander working again, but Huang, having lost hope, shuts down all systems, including the oxygen supply. Kim tells Huang not to follow in his father's footsteps. Huang then confesses that he has seen the truth in his father's will in which he wrote that he knew about the faulty engine a month before the first moon mission but went ahead due to his hunger for success. Kim interrupts him and reveals the full story. Huang's father had informed him a day before the launch and requested a two-month delay. However, Kim, furious at the thought of further delay, proceeded with the launch anyway, considering the error to be minimal. He asks Huang to forgive his father and not doubt him once. As Kim cries out desperately for Huang's return, everyone's hope is fading. But suddenly, there's a breakthrough. The oxygen supply is restored, and the ship comes back online. Huang, having forgiven his father, is now ready to continue. Seeking guidance, he asks for directions on what to do next. Meanwhile, Moon Young, overhearing everything, decides to go against orders and reconnect with Kassa to come up with a new plan. Kim hurries back to the control room, and together with the scientists, they help Huang go outside and manually activate the thrusters in a more open area. This allows Huang to successfully launch the command module. At the same time, Moon Young, locked in her office, reaches out to the astronauts at the American station, trying to convince them to help. However, she's interrupted and taken away by higher-ups. Seeing that the ship is heading towards a part of the moon, where a regular landing isn't possible. Huang improvises by strapping the drone around himself. Kim tells him to open the hatch and jump. Eventually, Huang jumps and activates the drone as soon as he is about to hit the surface. Even after the drone support, Huang receives an impact while landing and communication is lost, leaving everyone fearing the worst. Just then, the American station announces its approach to the rescue mission. Thankfully, the drone is still working, capturing Huang's expression and enabling him to send his coordinates to the rescuers. Images of Huang being looked after by the American crew spread worldwide, leading to celebrations. After this success, Kassa offers Kim his old job back, but he declines, choosing to return to his observatory. When Huang returns to South Korea, he's hailed as a hero by the minister, but Huang remains focused on honoring his fellow astronauts' memory. A month later, it was announced that South Korea would join the International Space Committee as the ninth member. Additionally, Moon Young was appointed the first female director of NASA, 
a decision made by the White House. Meanwhile, in the observatory, Kim hosts a teacher for his students for a space lesson. As an employee demonstrates the astronaut suit, Kim is shocked to find out it's actually Huang under the helmet. The two men share a salute, acknowledging their shared journey and mutual respect. And the movie also ends here. Don't go anywhere. Click the video on your screen to keep these wild movie recaps rolling. Smash that like button and subscribe for more insane movie adventures. I'll catch you film fanatics on the next one.